The raw galley looks pretty easy to get into with only six screws in the back. Today we're going to open it up and upgrade the hard drive inside to a one terabyte. All you need to get inside the device is a simple Phillips screwdriver. The Solid M P41 Plus is probably the best value M2 drive that we can put in our unit. Let me show you how to pop that in and reset windows. Obviously the first thing that we need to do is to put something under our screen to protect it from scratches. After that all we have to do is take out the six screws that are on the back of the console. The screw in the bottom middle here doesn't get removed so all we have to do is just loosen that one. These are pretty long screws overall but they should come out with relative ease. Once you get those five screws out all you have to do is just lift it up and put it on its side. We're going to be splitting it open here from the trigger. There's a small white ridge here between the two triggers. With a small pry tool all you have to do is just push it towards you and the back should come right off. With that open all we have to do is to go to the other side and do the same thing over there. The way the shell is designed this is probably the easiest way to get this off. If it's not coming off easy just double check to make sure that you removed all the screws on the back. These are also pretty sturdy clips so don't worry too much about breaking them. If it didn't come off the whole way you can take your pry tool and pop it open a little bit more or just pull and it should come right off. Work your way around the console and lift slowly. Out of all the handhelds that I've disassembled this is definitely one of the easiest ones. And with little trouble the back plate is removed. With the back plate removed all we have to do next is to unplug the battery. Being careful with these small wires lift up on both sides and it should come up pretty easy. Don't use any metal tools to remove the battery cable. The hard drive is just kept under here and it can be removed easily with one screw. As this is a pretty small screw just be careful not to lose it. To remove the hard drive all you have to do is pull down and it should come right out. Getting an extra 512 gigabyte M2 drive here from this unit kind of makes me want to use this in my Steam Deck. The stock hard drive here is supplied by Micron. Let's grab the new hard drive and install it. Just be careful when you're lining it up to put the notch in the correct spot. The drive itself shouldn't take much force to push in. When you insert the drive just make sure that it's lined up straight on both sides. Then grab the M2 screw and tighten the drive into place. After that all we have to do is just reconnect the battery and put the back plate on. You can use your fingernail here to push down both edges of the battery connector. Then just grab the back plate and line it up into place. Once you're sure it's correctly lined up go around the edge pushing the locks into place. You should hear a couple loud snaps as it's closing. With the unit closed now all you have to do is just go around the edge to make sure that it's been completely snapped shut. Then just put the screws back in the back plate. The bottom middle screw should be tight in the last. When you get all the screws back in just go double check them all just to make sure that they're wrist tight. Make sure not to over tighten these to avoid cracking the plastic. Now all we have to do is to turn the unit on and reinstall windows. To get your unit to boot up for the first time after swapping the hard drive you need to plug in your power cable. Once the power cable has been connected the unit should start normally. Then press escape as soon as it starts up to go into the BIOS. I thought my unit was definitely frozen here but you do have to wait a little while for it to first start up. Just keep pressing escape occasionally. To give you some sort of idea of how long this is actually taking this is being fast forward at 200% and as you can see it's definitely taking a little while. With a little bit of patience though you can see yeah it does boot. When the boot menu finally loads use your keyboard and go down to enter setup so it can go into the BIOS. I have to admit the BIOS does actually look really impressive for a handheld device. Press the Y button on the ally then press right on the keyboard. Now that you're finally in the advanced menu press enter on the cloud recovery. This will bring up the cloud recovery option that allows ASUS to download windows and all the required software. After viewing the privacy policy and skipping a few quick setup options it'll ask you to connect to your network. Go ahead and put in your wireless password and it'll connect to your wireless network. This next part I recommend plugging your device into a charger as it can take quite a long time. With your device finally plugged in go ahead and let it download. The download here does take a while to do. I'd walk away and come back later and check on it. With everything ready to go all we have to do next is just wait a second. Once that loads up it'll come back into the cloud recovery menu. Even though my internet connection was consistent for some reason it said the connection failed. After saying connecting for a good while it popped up with another menu telling me to plug in the charger. Since the charger is already connected just go ahead and press ok to continue to the next step. The next step shows us a menu that says that you're responsible to back up all your files that you want. I don't have anything on here so I'm just going to go ahead and start the recovery process. The cloud recovery download did take longer than any other part in this entire process. After a little while though the download will finish and we can proceed to the next step. 
The device has a couple other things that it needs to get ready before rebooting the Windows. I think this is pretty cool that Asus can include this kind of recovery option in their BIOS. Hopefully other handheld manufacturers like iNeo can have an option like this in the future. With that finished, we can finally boot into Windows. After a typical Windows setup of getting all your devices ready, it should boot in. I thought this was kind of odd how it booted into a random administrator account. I just hit OK on the system preparation tool that popped up and it rebooted. From here it's just your typical Windows setup. Go ahead and select your country and proceed to the next step. Instead of logging into a Microsoft account, you can make an offline account quite easy here. To create a local account, type in no at thankyou.com. When it asks for a password here, just put anything in, literally just a bunch of jumbled letters. Microsoft is going to come back and say, hey, that's not a Microsoft account. Then it'll proceed to tell us, hey, maybe you want to make a local account instead. Then just go ahead and put the username in for your device. I tried the Shift F10 method on the keyboard, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to work anymore. It's nice that otherwise still works though with making a local account. And with all that finished, we're finally in the Windows. Swapping over to my capture card here, the first thing you want to do on a new Windows setup is to connect all your accessories. If you press the Armory Crate button, it'll pop up with a prompt telling you to go to the website to download the software. Scroll down the page a little till you see the download button. From the menu that comes up, go ahead and select the light package. Go ahead and unzip the file, then run the installer. Select reopen the app once the installer is finished. With Armory Crate up and running we can see now that we have quite a few options that we can adjust. In the content menu go to the update center first because there's probably a few updates that we need to take care of. Go ahead and check for updates then run the update. There's a couple simple Windows tweaks that I like to adjust on any of my Windows devices. First of all, right click on the taskbar and go to taskbar settings. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the widgets and chat options. At the bottom of the menu, select taskbar behaviors, then select the alignment to the left. You can also hide the taskbar here if you want a simple desktop. We need to go ahead and download the Ally drivers next from the main website. From the support page, click driver and utilities, then scroll down and select your operating system. From there, you just want to go down this page and download all the required drivers that we're going to need for the OS. You can also download the MyAsus app here, which we're going to need for some firmware updates. The MyAsus app is located on the Microsoft Store, just go ahead and install it from there. Inside of the MyAsus app, go ahead and click on customer support, then live update. Go ahead and check for updates, then run the update. Anytime that you're updating the firmware, make sure to have the unit plugged in. With that done, just go ahead and download the rest of the drivers and go ahead and install them. You can get rid of the user account control pop-up by opening this and changing when these notifications appear, then set to never notify. In the AMD driver software, you can go ahead and double check to make sure that it's currently updated. As you can see, mine has already been updated to the latest. Click on the gear at the top right corner of our screen, then click on the display tab. In the options menu here, the first thing that we need to do is to turn on free sync. We also need to make sure that we're using full RGB and the highest color bitrate that it'll support. I can't turn on free sync right now as this is connected to my capture card. Another thing that I like to do with my handhelds that run Windows is to disable indexing. Right click on your hard drive and uncheck the indexing option. Then hit apply, OK, then hit continue and ignore all. While this can help with search functionality, it can definitely slow down your computer due to continuous indexing of files in the background. Ninite.com is an excellent website for downloading a wide range of software needed for a new Windows setup. On the website, go ahead and select all the software you want, then go down to the bottom and hit get your Ninite. Then open the file and it'll download and install all the software in one go. I also like to disable defragmenting on my gaming handhelds as well. Search for defrag and it should pop up in the start menu. Then go to change settings and disable the scheduler. Make sure you click OK to verify the changes. If you haven't done so already, make sure you check for Windows updates as there's probably quite a few of them. As you can see, I have a ton of Windows updates on mine, so I'm going to go ahead and install all these now. If you click on the start menu, then type in msconfig, it should come up with a system configuration. Then head over to the startup menu and open the task manager. Scroll down the list here and disable anything that you don't want running when the unit starts up. In general, all you want to keep is your antivirus as well as anything that has to do with drivers. 
and of course any gaming software like Steam. Speaking of Steam, if you enjoy this Steam Deck, you'll probably want to use Big Picture Mode on the ROG Ally. In the interface options, make sure that you have Steam set to start in Big Picture Mode. This gives us a nice interface to work with for all our games. We can even shut off the device directly from Steam Big Picture Mode. In the Settings menu, you also might want to make sure to enable the battery percentage under General Settings. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below.